what the flattening world means and the connectivity of the world means is that the that more people can play and that people with talent and motivation and ability can participate in the global economy. The last 15 years is with the internet, now you have the Indian and the Chinese on a level playing field with the US. This has never happened before. That you, suddenly the world became a very small place. So all the barriers, all the differences between, you know, between uh, students over there and here came down. And now they're competing with each other. I mean, we had a unique situation when the Europe education was destroyed post the World War II. Japan was destroyed post World War II. China was being run by communist insanity. And India was very, uh, they circled themselves. They didn't want to go out and deal very much with the rest of the world. So we really had an incredible situation. That is a world that we'll never see again. Most people have been through an educational system and they think therefore that they are experts in it. Uh, everybody wants their kids to have the same kind of education they had, but the fact is the world has changed. And the kind of educational system that we had in the 1940s or 50s or 60s or 70s is outmoded today. American K through 12 um, education has really been a failure for the last 25 years and and it's not because of any one person every all the people around the system are working very hard to make that education system better but what what has happened is that structurally the American education system is broken by the 12th grade only 3% of African Americans are proficient in mathematics compared to 4% of Hispanics 10% of Native Americans, 20% of whites, and 34% of Asian Americans. Over 90% of middle school students are taught science by teachers with little or no training in the subject. Out of 29 of the world's developed countries, the United States places 24th in mathematics. I think American kids have a bigger challenge than Indian kids. And the reason is that when you grow up with economic certainty, it takes a very different kind of motivational pull. So when you grow up like I did, where, you know, my parents were both professionals, they were very smart, you know, yet we had no money. I mean, I had to buy secondhand textbooks. And now for me, that economic opportunism is a simple beacon. It makes me work hard, it makes me apply myself. So I actually think kids in the United States have a bigger challenge of being able to get to this point because they have to apply themselves and rev their internal engine in a different way. And I'm not quite sure exactly how you get that uniformly like you do with economic opportunism. The Chinese economy is growing so rapidly. The opportunities for people who are well-educated are so extraordinary compared with a generation ago. Um, whereas in the US, when the, the general population is more comfortable, there's maybe not so much that, that economic drive. And we know that in high school, people, you know, kids are just skating by quite often. I think we don't have the motivation throughout the society that is true in China. It doesn't mean we don't have it, but we don't have it as broadly. You know, you've got to realize in India and China, you're struggling, they're struggling to get out of poverty. Higher education, becoming an engineer, becoming a scientist, is a passport out of poverty. That you know, you're going to be much better off than, than, your, than your parents were, than your grandparents were, and you're going to get a lot of respect in society if you study math, science, and become an engineer. That's not the case in the USA. We have, you know, the, the hunger isn't there, the desire isn't there, the need isn't there. And that's why you'll find that Indian and Chinese kids are a lot more motivated to get into these fields and to succeed because they're fighting starvation, they're fighting hunger.
。呃，当时上大学的不多，所以大部分家长是没有上过大学，他们希望下一代上大学，去自己的小孩肯定是能够有一个比较高的学历。独生子女，还有文化大革命，那像我们这一届的吧，我我们主要是，我和他爸爸两个人都是认为，就是说投资在教育啊这种。哦，那个那个，呃，是啊。I think my parents' idea of a success will be. Maybe five years down the line, we have a very financially stable job. We're happy with what we are doing, which I think which comes first. And then, uh, like maybe a good family, like they'd want us to get married by then. I'm not so sure how that would work out, but you know, have like a nice family, good husband, kids, and nice home for yourself. I think that's what. My mom's always there, and she she's like she's helped me study from. I mean, she helped me learn the alphabet. She helped she helped me through all of my studies. This is alternate for pl plate. Use banana leaf. One day, Tanmay. I mean, she used to sit next to me and read out everything, and I used to sit next to her and listen. And I used to grasp, and that that was my ability. I mean, I could once I listened, I could remember. Hmm? He asks you when you take learner's license. Unless the person has a license, you can't take them with you. You get fined. We have learner's license. Hmm? What's that? I know. A lot of what my parents see is me coming and going. I see them at dinner on like one night a week. If they get home before about five, they'll see me uh, leave for work. And then I'll come home from work and I might eat something and I'll get changed and then I'll come down here. I really like my family. I get along with them great. Um, we have our arguments sometimes. I, I think because they set high expectations, I think it's more of, I don't want to let them down. I think that's more of a punishment than them grounding me or, you know, restricting me to going out. Just disappointing them, it, that guilt that you have. I think that's the reason why I strive so much for success. What are you watching? Gosh, we can't even go a day without, or a second without. Watching football. Mom, we need football night. Night. one day a week. What do you mean one second? I want to have a good job and I want to be a doctor, but I also want to have a family. How's calculus going? Do we have a test tomorrow? Where are you studying at Tyler's? I'm not studying. I'm just hanging out there. I'm doing homework. Oh, I thought you oh, said Oh, I've heard studying. that excuse before. <laughs> what? I'm doing homework at Tyler's. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you're watching Desperate Housewives. It looks like the American student's life is like, a, you know, almost a dream. It's like no studying, very light syllabus. And maybe study only when you want to. No, we don't need bread for the second part. For April, I don't need the light. I need the curve and the line. Yeah, so we need to do Well-defined on the y-axis, I can do x, d, y between 0 and 3. Yesterday, that was Saturday. I got up in the morning at 5.45, got dressed for tuitions. And then two hours in tuitions after that, did a bit of math and physics, and then went to breakfast with my friends. And after that, straight to school, and I think after another half an hour, we had classes for three hours after that, without a break. Mom, it's not